there were a handful of times where I came home from my internship and I just felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I wasn't doing the right things. And honestly, it almost seems like a weekly occurrence. There's always that one thing that we gotta get out, gotta get out. The coolest thing that I can even do is actually go visit some of the projects that I've worked on. And I feel like there's still just so much more opportunity to grow and I'm six and a half years in. And land development can be a great career, but it sure is not for everyone. Before you commit years of your life to it, let me give you some pros and cons that I wish someone had told me back in the day. Let's first start off with the pros. So the number one pro is that there is a strong demand and there is stability. I feel like the last six and a half years of my career that the work really has never slowed down. There's even a lot of work being put on backlog, on hold, telling clients no. Now, there might be a caveat here. I am in Florida. Florida is a booming market. So my advice to you is to make sure that you are scoping out the proper geographies out there to land yourself in a market that has solid demand. The most highly demanded position right now is actually that two to three year EIT who has some experience, knows how to work the programs, has been a part of the process before, which means if you come in, if you learn and you work hard, there's actually an amazing opportunity. The silver tsunami is actually a real thing and it's underway. There are a handful of 55 plus year olds who are trying to retire, sell their business. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna have a lot of older millennials step into these higher management roles, director roles, and we are going to need engineers under under us. And with our scope of work, land development is always needed. Anytime that you're constructing a new building or demolishing an existing structure and creating a new parking lot, we're at the forefront of it all. Now, obviously my six and a half years of stability doesn't mean I'm going to get another six and a half years of stability, but based on the needs of the industry, the market, and the development that's happening around major cities, all these are showing good signs of a solid trajectory. The number two pro is a clear career path. You simply have two long-term routes. Number one, a technical leader, or number two, a people leader. You typically start as an EIT early on, about one to two years. You move your way into what's called a, an assistant PM role. Then you work your way into a project manager role. Then you can head to senior project manager and then director. And some companies have different terminologies. There's numbers like P1, P2, P3, or engineer one, engineer two. You can be the the technical leader or the people leader. So you can keep going down this route of being the people manager, which you'll head to project management. Or you can head down this technical lead where you can become a guru of stormwater management. Maybe you're really good at planned production. Maybe you're really good at grading. Maybe you're just good at everything and you can literally handle 10 projects on your own, get them all done, but you really don't want to be the face. So you kind of have a choice to make. And I think that's what's good about this industry is you don't have to feel pigeonholed to just do people management or just technical route. Now, some might make the argument, well, easier said than done, but that's why it's in your best interest to find a company and an office and leadership that will give you those opportunities and will give you a clear outline of the ladder that you can climb. There are many companies out there. If you ever need some one-on-one -on -one advice with this, give me a comment, shoot me an email. The number three pro is that you work on real visible projects. The coolest thing that I can even do is actually go visit some of the projects that I've worked on. I nerd out when I see some interesting drainage connections that took me maybe a week to figure out with the director, or maybe we clashed with the county or the water management district over a weird configuration, making this crazy a thousand node drainage model work. Whatever it was, there was always some sort of problem and a solution, and it's actually really cool to go see that out in the field. Number four, and this is a huge one, so you learn so many things things outside of engineering. I've learned about real estate, business, local government, CDDs, HOAs, land deals, contracting. Now you're not necessarily doing the day-to-day -day of these roles, but you're in the conversations, you're in the meetings, you're out there having that dialogue with these types of people and you're witnessing what's important to them, what stresses them out and what they need to do their job. So over time, you kind of build this connection with them and you start understanding a little bit more about their job and how things work especially local government. When I was an intern, I was completely lost. There's planning, there's zoning, there's all these different departments, right? And it actually kind of took me a few years to understand the role of local government and how they're allowing these types of developments and why there are certain processes in place. So it's really cool to see this kind of operation. You know, there's a handful of civil engineers that I know that have become land use attorneys, contractors, and land developers. And if that isn't a gateway to other opportunities, I don't know what is. Number five, one of the last pros is the pay isn't as bad as you think. 
Starting pay isn't amazing. You're probably making anywhere between seventy to eighty thousand dollars, and that's also dependent on the company, geography, and your role. And here's what I'll say, and I could probably go on a really, really long lecture about it. I just think there's a really bad misconception about how much people are actually making in the real world, especially among students. They're hit in the face after college when they realize that they're not making 100K and they flip out and then they second guess every decision that they've ever made. I don't know why that is. I don't know if some people are brainwashed. I don't know if it's bad information. I don't know if schools don't inform their students. I don't know. Because I know a handful of aerospace, mechanicals, electricals, that are making the same amount out of school and even after three to four years. So it really depends on the company and the role out there. The last thing I'll say here is that you're not stuck at 70 to $80,000. You can make six figures after three to four years if you put in the proper time and make the right choices. But it doesn't get handed to you because there are a lot of learning curves in this industry. And I've already kind of made a video about my first four years in civil engineering, the pay, what I was doing. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to put a little link right here. And then the link can also be in the description. I dive into way more details there. All right, I guess now is what people have all been waiting for, which is the cons. The number one con is that it can be a grind. I've worked 60 plus hour weeks before. I've worked weekends. Clients can be very demanding. They can call you, they can text you, they question you. And when a permit is on the line, it's usually all hands on deck. That's you, your team, your boss sometimes even, trying to get a construction plan set out the door, trying to get a submittal in. It can get really hectic out there. Now this doesn't have to be every week, but it definitely has its moments more often than not. Number two con, it isn't for the super introverted or even the introverted. I don't even know how I've made it through. There were a handful of times where I came home from my internship and I just felt like I didn't belong. I felt like I wasn't doing the right things. I questioned myself. I always feel like all the other people were super extroverted. They were really good on the phone. They were able to have small talk way easier than me. And it actually took me many years to even build some form of confidence. So if you want to grow in this industry, you have to be able to pick up the phone, write emails, be respectful, be able to go out on site, talk to a contractor, and just not be scared. And this type of interaction isn't for everyone. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. Now, the reason why land development involves extrovertedness is because truly it's a team job. It's filled with project managers, EITs, CAD designers, permit coordinators, contractors, other consultants. It takes a whole team to develop a site. Now, what I'll say about that, even though it is a con, maybe it could also be seen as a challenge for you who is introverted and you can challenge yourself to grow, learn some communication skills and learn how to be a part of a team, but it's up to you. So the number three con is that it can be very unpredictable. It can also be fast paced pending your workload. So for the super anxious people or the people that really just like to go with the flow, or people that aren't that great at time management or organization, this will be a challenging field. Let me start with the unpredictability part. So you can control your week for the most part, at least in terms of what you need to work on, but then all of a sudden you get a call from a client who needs you to do 20 SIRs or 20 test fits, or you get 30 comments from the city on a project that you didn't really expect. The contractor calls you, something is wrong out in the field. You gotta go to an impromptu site visit. Something always happens. And honestly, it almost seems like a weekly occurrence. And people who can't handle the shifting of time and the shifting of resources, and if they get overwhelmed easy, it's not necessarily the field for you. Now, what I will say is that you will gain the skill over time. You start learning what's critical path, what's more important than certain things that come in. And with the right team, you can get better at it and it's rewarding. You learn how to manage your time effectively, communicate effectively. So I would say you can't really run away from these cons. Ultimately, I think they will make you a stronger engineer, but this environment is not for everyone especially the people who like clearly define tasks in a long runway for project lifespan. You're not necessarily gonna get that. Now let me talk about the fast paced part. Sometimes deliverables need to get out the door, whether it's a site plan, a concept, an investigation report, an email, a comment response letter. There's a handful of things that need to get out. And you might already have like two or three things on your plate, but since it's urgent, you have to hop on it 
It's all hands on deck, like I was talking about earlier. And I'll be honest, that's so common throughout the week. There's always that one thing that we gotta get out, gotta get out. And it can be really fast paced. So again, if you're super anxious, start considering these factors. I think where I'll conclude here is that land development isn't perfect. It's not always clean. It's not predictable. It's not the sexiest of engineering. I'm not building rockets or shipping anything to the moon. But if you enjoy working on real projects that you get to see out in the field, if you like learning, if you like solving problems, if you like being a part of a team and working together on a common end goal, then land development could be a good fit. The biggest thing is understanding the trade-offs early so you're not surprised later. And what's funny because when I'm making this video, it kind of sounds like I'm selling land development. But the reason why I'm passionate about sharing my expertise and my knowledge is because I was that intern that often questioned themselves and I never really knew what I wanted to do. And it's not like it was ever my dream to be a civil engineer. However, it's created an amazing opportunity opportunity for me, a steady career, and I feel like there's still just so much more opportunity to grow and I'm six and a half years in and there's always a new project. There's always a process to get better at and it's given me a platform to create all this type of content, which is just, it just feels like unlimited. So that's kind of why I made this video. I hope to help. hope I didn't ramble too much. I always try to keep these short and sweet. Drop a comment below on where you're at in your career. I'm always happy to connect with other students and professionals out there in this space. But that's all I have for today, guys. I hope this helped and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.